everyone. All right, today's class, try to grab a ball. If not, you can use two balls and a sock. And that can also act as massage ball, pressure point, uh, marma point, pin points for our fit foot massage and neck massage. Meanwhile, go ahead, grab a bolster. Let your belt away. If you have your bolster, or pillows, or blocks, you can use the same. Putting your knees around the bolster, we're gonna exhale, relax down onto your chest, resting on one cheek. If you have a block, do the same. Rest your block underneath your forearms, your forehead, I mean. Have your knees apart, you can even put another block just to help guide you. And place the block further away to give some space for your nose. You can have your arms out in front. You're just resting here. You can even put a block underneath your sit bones just to help guide your sit bones, Make sure, making sure you're grounding them. So rewinding, if you want a bolster, you can use a bolster. Placing one cheek on one side, resting your arms out. Slowly breathe into your back body. Close those eyes, settling in on your breath. Soften the throat. Make it hollow. Breathing into your back body. And exhaling, releasing all your tension. Slowing the breath down. You can even swap cheeks if your other cheek needs a little rest. And then breathing into your back. Now forming an intention for your practice. So you can lay on your third eye if you like, or just rest on one cheek. Focusing on your third eye internally, looking up. Thinking of an intention for your practice, whether it'll be something you practice on the mat or eventually off the mat. So if you're practicing kindness, think kind thoughts. Practicing patience, truth, truth for yourself, for others, or practice ahimsa, nonviolence, which is that kindness to yourself and to others and to animals and all the other beings, sentient beings. And then sealing that intention with your breath, inhaling all the way to the top of your lungs. Filling your, your lungs three-dimensionally. So breathing in three-dimensionally. Hold it at the very top. Step a little bit more, Aaron. Keep holding. And then exhale slowly out of the mouth. Big puff of air. You're coming off the mat. You can press your palms into the ground, inhaling up. And then here, you can sit on the back of the heels, taking that right arm in front, left arm over, winding, twisting. If you can't, you can dangle. So you're getting into your left shoulder, breathing slow. Inhaling those arms up. Breathe into your tight shoulders. Close your eyes. Exhale, drop your elbows and then drop your forehead toward the thumbs. You'll rest them on the thumbs. Again, rocking your ears left and right. Just gently close those eyes. Feeling any stretching in your neck. And then coming off, I'm going to whack the toes. Massage them gently. I'm going to Open up the toes. You're gonna to tuck the toes. You're gonna to sit back on your back of your heels. 
Kind of open up those arches, especially if you're sitting, if you're walking in shoes all day and your, your arches need a little bit more support, it's good to stretch them out. So your right arm across, your left arm kind of clasp and bind under. You're stretching out again your right shoulder and interlace and intertwine. Inhale, lift those elbows up, close those eyes. Breathe into your shoulders. Exhale, drop your elbows, drop your forehead toward the thumbs, resting it gently, knocking left and right. Close those eyes. And coming off gently, give it a good massage. And then cross your ankles, coming into a seated pose. Now you can come into Indian cross-legged Sukhasana or Siddhasana where your heel is in front of the, uh, front of the other, they're not actually touching. Pull the flesh out from the back or you can go half lotus where one heel is up against the crease of your hips and then actually externally rotates your hip bones out more. So again, pull the flesh out from the back side to externally rotate anteriorly tilt the pelvis. And inhale, arms up, reach for the stars, look toward the thumbs. Inhale, keep reaching, soften the throat. Exhale, hands out in front, hand. Inhale through the crown. Exhale, walk those fingers out. Again, follow your breath, close your eyes. Inhale through the crown. Exhale, walk those fingers out. Hinge at the hips. Bring that nice back stretch as well. So inhale. Lifting out just slightly, coming out of the pose slightly. Exhale, keep walking those fingers out. I'm going to slowly inhaling, walk the hands all the way to your far left, grabbing that left hand with the right. Breathe into your right lung. Slow your breath down. Inhaling back toward the center, inhaling, reaching. Exhale, walk the hands all the way to your far right. Grabbing your right hand with the left, breathe into your left one. And slowly inhaling back, inhaling, pressing back up. Cross, cross the opposite way. From here again, pulling the flesh out from the backside. Inhale the arms up, reach for the stars. Inhale, look toward the thumbs, relax the throat. Inhale, keep reaching. Exhale, hands out in front. Inhale, through the crown. Exhale, walk those hands out in front. Again, close your eyes. Inhale, through the crown. Exhale, walk those fingers out. So hinge at the hips. Slow the breath down. Close those eyes. Inhaling, walking the hands all the way to your far left. Grab the left hand with the right. Breathe into your right lung. Inhaling back toward the center. Reaching out. Inhale, exhale, walking the hands all the way to your far right. Breathe into your left lung. Slowly inhaling back toward the center. Inhaling, pressing back up. Hands on the waist, sitting nice and tall. Big, little, little tiny circles. So close those eyes, lubricating the top atlas, and then slow it down. Big, big circles. Get the next stretch in. You might have had a tense day or neck text necking all day, being on your computer. And then we're going to exhale, dropping the chin to the chest. We're going to get ready for dinner. We're going to press your fingers into the rectus abdominis and then. Pull the elbows in toward each other. Spread the skin of the back. Gently massaging in toward the center. And then quickly release. So you're kind of helping the gastric juices go. Hands on the waist, nice and tall. If you need a block nearby, you can grab one, place it on your right elbow. And then we're gonna inhale tall, exhale, dropping your right elbow toward that block. If you want to go a little deeper, can knock that uh, block away. Ground your right elbow toward the ground. Try to sit your sit bones on the mat. Inhale that left arm up to the sky. Exhale, left hand over the ear. A full side stretch. 
And then take that top hand, grabbing the back of the skull. Give yourself a nice long stretch. So from here, hands on the waist, exhaling, dropping to your right elbow. And then inhale that left arm up to the sky. Exhale that top hand behind the skull and give you a nice big stretch, breathing in along your left lung. And make a fist behind the skull. Start pumping away your top bicep. And inhale, look up toward that top bicep. Get that nice stretch of your armpits. And we're gonna take that top hand and wrap it behind the back. Try to reach the opposite wrist. Again, let your head dangle. So get that full stretch of the neck. Drop your right ear toward that right shoulder. Close those eyes. Feel that stretch and then look slowly, gaze down. And then hands on the waist, inhaling back up. Now cross, the, cross and cross the opposite way with your legs. So equal and opposite with the zip bones. Pull the flesh out from the back. And again, if you need a block, you can place it underneath your left elbow. Hands on the waist. So if you went one direction, turning your head, I'm gonna do a little neck rolls, turning the opposite way. So slow the breath down. Close those eyes, big, big circles. Screw on your head. You should have a lot of tension with the text necking or sitting in the computer. Eventually, exhaling chin to the chest, we're gonna get ready for dinner. We're gonna press your fingers into the rectus abdominis. We're gonna exhale, press firmly into the core, pull the elbows toward each other, spread the skin of the back, and then quickly release. So this helps with the GI tract, kind of help it digest. So everything from lunch is kind of moving down there. Inhale, toss. Sitting tall, hands on the waist, exhale, dropping your left elbow toward that left block. If you want a little bit more tilt, you can knock that block out of the way. Get that full stretch, inhale that right arm up to the sky, point and shoot. And then exhale that top hand over the ear. And then turn the heart up, keep breathing. Taking that top hand, reach for the back of the skull, extending the spine. Good job, keep breathing here. Now we're gonna make a fist behind the skull. Start pumping away your top bicep. And activating, it's called Kriya Yoga. You're telling one muscle group what to do. And inhale, look up toward the top bicep. Keep on pumping away the bicep. Good job. Now wrapping that top hand behind the back, try to reach for the opposite wrist. And let your head kind of dangle, feel that neck stretch. And then you can drop your left ear toward the left shoulder. And then slowly, hands on the waist, we'll look down toward the ground and slowly gaze through the middle of the room. All right, unwind your legs, take your feet up, and a windshield wiper those knees. Get circulation back to the feet. Then we're gonna take your feet out wide. So, pulling them on the corners of the mat if you want or have them cushion, and pull the flesh out from the back. Inhale, arms up, nice and tall, reaching. Exhale, hands out in front, keep the toes pointed up. Again, inhale through the crown. Exhale, walk those hands out. So follow your breath, close your eyes if you need to, but keep the toes pointed up, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, walk the hands out, hinge at the hips. So again, follow your breath, keeping the toes up. Inhale through the crown. Exhale, keep walking those hands out as you can. Hinging at the hips. So you're noticing, if you open your eyes, the difference of when you first started. So again, keep breathing. And exhale, keep walking the hands out. Slow the breath down, keep pointing the toes up. Slow the breath down, follow your breath. And slowly, slowly, inhaling, oh, good job. Now inhale, arms up to the sky, reaching. Exhale, dropping your left hand in front of that left knee. Taking the top hand over, shooting like a rainbow. Inhale, reaching, exhale, go a little deeper, trying to grab your left foot, turn the heart up to the sky. Get the full stretch laterally. Slowly, slowly, inhale up. 
Again, dropping over to your right knee, in front of that right knee, top hand, left hand over the ears, shooting it like a shooting star. Turn the heart up. You're trying to reach, reach for the right toes. And keep turning the heart up. Might feel a little different both sides. You're gonna equal opposite attention. Slowly inhaling up. Now turning, twisting, looking over to your left foot. If you need a belt nearby, you can grab it. But we're gonna, ah, something's poking me. So we're gonna twist and turn. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, grab your ankle. Grab your big toe, little toe. If you need a belt, use a belt. So bowing down over that left knee. Go beyond if you want. Grab your palms past your feet if you can. Get the full side stretch of your lower back or right lateral side. So this is almost like need a head post. Johnny Shoshasta. One time, slow your breath down. Listen for that textured Ujjayi, victorious breath. Slowly, slowly inhaling up. Now turning, twisting, looking over to your right foot. And you can inhale, arms up, reaching for the stars. Exhale, grabbing your right ankle. Your big toe, little toe if you like. Or you can use a belt. Exhale, bowing down towards your left knee. You're resting your forehead toward the knee. That'd be cool. If you want to go a little deeper, you can try to grab your palms past your right foot. Get the full stretch of your left lateral back. Slow your breath down. Exhale smoothly. That time to luxuriate in this juicy pose. Hopefully it releases all this tension in your legs and then slowly, slowly and howling up. Now seal the feet together. So pulling in the toes, wrapping the fingers around the top of the toes, pulling the heels in closer to the groin here. You can wiggle your knees, kind of open up your hips like a butterfly, sitting nice and tall. And then exhale, forward fold. Allow your forehead ground down, so let the head drop if your neck allows. So breathing into a long gate through the crown. Exhale, go a little deeper. You can tug your heart a little closer toward the feet. So breathe into any tightness. Into your hip flexors. Nice little opener. So keep breathing in slow, textured breaths. And soften your throat. Follow out that throat. Slowly, slowly, inhaling up. Now, taking the thumb, shoving it into the soles of your feet, wrapping the tops of your feet, and exhale, press into your inner thighs. Now roll your feet onto the lateral edge, opening up your feet like a book. You're gonna press firmly, so this helps open up that book. Now it helps rotate those ankles too. So helps. Stretch those ankles out. Now look at our lines on our feet and try to determine what it says. Where are our soul lines going to take us? Just like our feet lines and our head lines on our hands. What does our feet mean? You might notice there might be a lot of lines or none at all. All right, go ahead, massage. Massage the big toe, squishing, activating. So we have the balls out too. So I have two tennis balls and a sock. We're gonna start laying on that for massage and then a tennis ball for our feet. All right, so massaging the second toe, rubbing and rolling the middle toe, and then the ring toe, and then the pinky toe, and then do, do the second knuckle, kind of ringing it out, massaging, massaging our feet. We don't get enough self-massage. And then here with our thumbs, Big circles. You might notice you might need a pedicure or a little more um, feet care, a little massage, and then go toward the center of the lungs, pressing firmly into 
the center. That is where the heart should be. And then either side, a little below, is the pancreas and the kidneys, or actually pancreas and liver, sorry. And then down the spine, imagine there's a spine, either side, a little deeper is the kidneys. And then now down the spine, imagine there's a spine, go down, big GI circle, big circular. You got your small intestines and the large intestines. So you can you point your toes or flex your feet. You notice the arches that are being stretched right around there. This is where the spring of life is in Qigong. And then walking the, the thumbs down, massage the knees, technically you have the foot reflexology and then all the way down to the heels. The heels of the heels and the feet. You can look at foot reflexology. Those are kind of cool, those maps. So pulling your feet out like a diamond. You can pull the flesh out, inhale, arms up, reach for the stars. Actually, we're going to drop that right hand back behind us. Inhale that left arm up to the sky, kind of reach and breathe. That opens up the lungs. And then exhale, dropping that left hand down, swapping hands. We're going to inhale that right arm up, breathe and reach. So it's a nice little stretch in the back. And then both arms up, inhaling, reaching. Exhale, bowing down, hands out in the front. Inhale through the crown here, you can bind those toes. And exhale, you can walk your sit bones, get a good massage. And then exhale slowly down, let the knees drop. If your glutes are tight, uh, there's a lot of pinch points. You can walk around on your sit bones. But again, slow your breath, breathing into the back body. And then slowly, slowly inhaling up, extend those legs. Flex the feet. You're going to pull the flesh out from the back. Inhale, arms up, reach for the stars. Here again, flex the hands and then press firmly into imaginary tray of water. You're going to pull the elbows past those ears, sitting nice and tall. So you're pressing firmly into your feet, pressing firmly into your hands. This is like your downward dog, different plane. We're going to exhale forward, fold. You can bend those knees, you grab your ankles, you grab your toes, you grab your belt, or you can go beyond. I'm keeping the knees bent since we haven't stretched out the hamstrings as much. So inhale through the crown, exhale, go a little deeper. A good back stretch here in Paschimottanasana, western side stretch where the sun doesn't shine. Our back side. Slowly, slowly inhaling up. Now taking your right foot, sealing it into your left inner thigh. Pull the flesh out from the back. So Johnny Shashasana is my favorite pose. Inhale, arms up, reaching for the stars. Exhale, forward fold, grabbing your ankle. If you grab your big toe, little toe, inhale through the crown. This is your great seal, Maha Mudra pose. Exhale, bowing down. Bend those elbows. Bend the left elbow too, and allow your forehead to come down to that left knee. Breathing into your back. Slow your breath down. Nice back stretch as well, and then slowly inhale up. Now taking that right hand, drop it behind your back. We're gonna inhale, lift with your left hand up to the crown and you'll lift your tailbone and then kind of come up onto your right knee. So it's almost like a modified side plank. And then you take that top hand over the ears. So you get the full side plank stretch. And then modified side plank and then exhale, dropping back down into that figure four. Now, take that left leg out to the side, pull the heel in, the right heel into the groin. Pointing left toes up. So this is Padfrita, so sideways, Jani Shushasana, knee to head pose. Inhale, arms up to the sky. Exhale, drop your left elbow in front of that left knee. Take the top hand over the ears. You can try to reach for those toes and turn the heart up. Get the full stretch, slow your breath down. Take that time to breathe. And slowly, slowly inhale back up. I might as well take the feet out wide, coming back into that Upavistana Kanasana. See how much more we have gone from step one, step two, 
to day 30. Now pull the flesh out. See how much even just stretching out the legs can get you further. So pointing the toes up. Inhale through the crown. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, hands out in front. Again, point the toes up. Inhale through the crown. Exhale, walk those hands out. Your hamstrings might be a little bit more stretched out. Your abductors, so breathe in. Exhale, walk those hands out. Also stretching out the back, keeping the toes pointed up. So follow the breath. Keep hinging at the hips, keep pointing the toes up, keep breathing into your back. Exhale, walk those fingers out. Slowly get into this deep pose and slowly, slowly press up. Now pulling the left heel in, the paprika sideways. Johnny Shrasasana, so inhale, arms up to the sky. Exhale, drop your right elbow in front of that. Right knee, left hand over, turning the heart up. So again, you might go a little deeper, feel and try to grab the right toes and turn the heart up. Taking that time to breathe. The lateral stretches, you get more taller, inhaling back up along the torso. Now taking that right leg, squishing that left foot into the right inner thigh. So pull the flesh out from the backside. Inhale, arms up, reach for the stars. Exhale, bowing down, grab your ankle, grab your big toe, little toe. Inhale through the crown. Exhale, bowing down. Again, you can use your belt as well. And go beyond if you wanna grab your whole palm past the foot. Again, breathing into your back, feel that juiciness of that release. Along that left, that lateral side. If you lay your forehead on and even bonus points, kudos. And slow the breath down. Take that time to breathe. And then slowly, slowly, and filling up. Uh, inhale that left arm up. Exhale, pulling and dropping behind your back. So move my box out of the way. I'm going to drop it behind your back. We're going to inhale that right arm up and then lift your tailbone. Coming into that side plank. So from my side, I'm facing this way. I'm going to drop my left hand back. Inhale, lift the hips. Top hand over. A full side stretch. And it's a side, it's a modified plank. Side, side plank, and then we're gonna exhale, drop it back down. Ooh, now extend those legs out. And then here, you can windshield wiper your feet. We're gonna point the toes, place the palms behind the back. We're gonna inhale, lift through the crown and lift the hips up into reverse plank. Good job, exhale, drop your tailbone down. So this gives you a little bit more um, arm strength in your triceps. Not just the biceps, your, tri your triceps right below. All right, hands behind. We're going to inhale, lift the hip bones, point the toes, drop the head back into the trapezius. Now bend those knees. Bend those knees and lift the hips up. This is your, your tabletop. Again, breathe and lift those hips up higher. And then exhale, drop your tailbone down. Good job. Now cross those ankles, we're going to come onto your hands and knees, spread those fingers, tuck the tailbone, engage the core, pull the ears away from the shoulders, shoulders away from the ears, we're going to engage the core. Now, we're going to tuck your toes, we're going to inhale, lift the hips up, pressing the heels back down, you can take the full length of the mat if you want, you can bend both knees, point the sit bones up, shake your head, nod, Stretch out the back and then exhale, drop the heels. The full calf stretch in here. You start pedaling away your heels. Spread those fingers. Make sure that distribution of the weight is equal. Spread out through your fingers. Not all on your palm, not just on your purple panels. And here, we'll look between the thumbs and bend those knees. Walk up, skip up, hop up into a four fold. Gonna exhale, 
Bend those knees, lay the belly in the lap, grab your elbows. You're gonna let the head dangle. You're gonna um, sway side to side, ragdolling it. With a full lower lumbar back stretch. Also stretches out the hamstrings and the, the glutes. And then harder lower lumbar from your tailbone to your crown. Getting the anti-gravity boots here. The compression, we're compressing every time we stand up. So this is anti-compressing. We don't press on those nerves. And then slowly inhale halfway up. So hands either on the shins or knees. Have that flat back, engage the core. So you're using your Udiya Bandha, your belly block, pulling your shoulders away from the ears, having that flat back, and then exhale forward full. Let your head dangle. You can even slip your palms underneath your feet. You can bend those knees. If you need a little balance, you can massage the creases of your palms. This is called Hasta um, Padasana. So Hasta is the hand. Hara is the foot, asana is the, the pose. So giving a good massage and then coming off from those hands, you inhale halfway up again, get a little bit more oxygen to your head and then exhale forward fold. So you're stretching out your glutes. Just slowly, slowly inhaling, rising up, hands together up to the sky. So Ustra, which is upward. Ustra and asana. So hands all the way up, hands together. Exhale, hands to the heart. So rolling the shoulders back, engage your core, tuck the tailbone. Lift those toes, plant them firmly into the mat. Close the, close those eyes. You're gonna exhale, lean forward. And then slowly lean back. Inhaling back toward the center. We're gonna Exhale, lean toward your right. Inhaling back toward your center and over to your left. And then exhaling back toward your core, your true self. All right, you're gonna blink your eyes open. You're gonna grab that ball. So just that singular ball. You're gonna place it under your right foot. So you're gonna massage it up and down. Get into all those three different layers of fascia. The ectoderm, men mesoderm, and the endoderm. So when we grow, when we're just little zygotes, those are our three layers and sheaths of, um, that's just dermatological, but um, nervous system, your GI tract, it forms. So you're kind of going into all the different layers of your skin, of your fascia, of, of your feet even. There's so many ligaments. Got a lot of nerves, sensory nerves. So go ahead, press a little harder and open up. The fascia is the fat where it connects with the feet. So you got, you have surprisingly fat in your feet. All right, go ahead, press underneath the big toe. There's fat in everything. There's fat in your skin. So there's fat in other places and then, you know, bony parts, but there's always fat. So roll it over to your pinky toe. I appreciate this fat because it makes you float. Especially in the ocean. Otherwise, you're going to be wearing flubber. You're going to wear some of those wetsuits. And then roll it onto the outer edge of your foot and all the way down to the heel. Pressing firmly onto the heel. We're going to gently roll it into the inner arch. And gently roll, opening up any trigger points in your feet. Just be gentle. And then coming to the center underneath the middle toe, you're going to gently. Wrap those those toes around as if you're gonna try to pick it up, and then kind of press firmly, coming down along the spine. So imagine there's that spine. So you kind of open up uh, like a blossom. Your foot. Imagine those lotus feet opening up to that center, like a spring of life in Qigong, and then coming down the spine, and then all the way down to the heel of the heel, and then pressing. Firmly off. So lifting up those toes, plant them firmly into the mat. You can have your hands on your, your heart. Namaste, you can have your hands off to the side. Feeling, close your eyes. Feel the energetic difference. Feel that subtle body energy coming out from your right foot versus your left foot. It's always kind of neat. It's so cool to me, mind blow, right? So 
it looks like almost like you have a better connection with the mat. And then now we're going to go with your left, the ball under your left foot. And it could be just because there's more sensory tingling sensation in your feet. But because of that, you're waking up all those 3 trillion cells in your body that belongs to your skin. And very intelligent cells in your body. And if your cells aren't talking to each other, that's what you call cancer. They start growing, growing. And one says apoptosis, stop, kill yourself, you know. Um, you're growing too prolifically. Another one just keeps ignoring it. So you want your body talking to yourself, the mind-body connection. So again, keep massaging up and down, telling what the body what to do, because we all work together as one whole unit. Not several different units, divisive units. You want to work together to keep functioning. So up and down, keep going a little deeper. It's more sensitive, be gentle. And then from here, pressing underneath the big toe, and then round to the pinky. And then on to the outer edge, lateral side of your foot. Gently coming all the way down to the heel. And press firmly and then gently into the inner arch. So the arch might be a little sensitive. So be gentle. And maybe something might pop or crack like my foot did. <laughs> be surprised, we're always on our feet. So this something needed a little bit more tenderness, more stretching. We come back to the center underneath the big toe, the big, sorry, the middle toe. That's kind of big for me. So underneath the middle toe, we're gonna rock it down the spine. So imagine there's a spine. I've been teaching surf lessons, so I just keep on saying, imagine there's a spine in the surfboard and we call it the stringer. I have no idea why it's that. Just imagine a string. So it's stronger than a string, it's like a spine. So all the way down the spine of our feet. There really aren't any spines, but the cuneiform, the, I don't know, <laughs> the talus, I already forgot the rest. All right, all the way down to the heel. All right, coming off the foot, you can kick that ball away. You know, lift those toes up, plant them firmly into the mat. Have your hands either onto, and namaste, onto your heart. Thumbs to your heart, or you can have your palms out in front. You feel the energy. Close those eyes. Feel the grip. You can even lift those toes up, plant them firmly into the mat. That's kind of cool, huh? All right, coming back into the top of the mat, your mat. Inhale, arms up, lifting. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway up. Breathing here, having a flat back. Exhale, slowly forward fold. So this is stretching out hamstrings. Half sun citations. Inhaling up. Hands to the sky. Exhale, hands to the heart. So that was a half sun salutation. We will do a full sun salutation. We'll do a moon salutation because it's evening. So inhaling, arms up, reaching. Exhale, forward fold. And then inhaling that right foot back, come into a runner's lunge, and then drawing the other foot back into a plank, or you can just drop the knees. Yeah. Go gentle. We're gonna exhale, drop your chin and chest. So this is called a pranam. Inhaling up into a small little cobra. So squeeze your elbow toward the ribs, pull your shoulders away from the ears, and then inhaling up. Into all fours and exhale, press back into a child pose. So slowly breathing here. Take that time to take that breath. It's nice release and her back. Exhaling fully and then slowly spreading those fingers, inhaling back up into all fours. Now again, tuck those toes, inhale, hips up to the sky, exhale, drop the heels, pulling back your sit bones into a downward dog, you shake your head and nod. You can look between the thumbs, you can bend those knees, you can skip up, walk up, hop up into a forward fold. Inhale, halfway up, exhale, forward fold. 
Inhale, sprouting arms up, hands to the sky. Exhale, hands together. All right, rolling the shoulders back, coming back into that samastihi. Well, standing pose, we're gonna inhale, arms up, reach for the stars. Exhale, four fold, nice and slow. Inhale, halfway up. Engage the core, exhale, dropping down. Hands on the, the mat, we're gonna inhale that left foot back. We're gonna drop it down into a runner's lunge. And then drop your back knee, untuck the back toes, kind of get that full stretch of your hips. Good job. Here you can draw the other leg instead of doing a plank, you can have it on your knees. We're gonna exhale, drop onto your chin and then your chest. And laying on your belly. And then you're gonna inhale, reach up the crown, squeeze those elbows, press gently into your palms into a cobra. So that's what they call a pranam. Uh, yes. Many cultures, they pray in this fashion. So exhaling back into child's pose. So good stretching, good exercise. Build up those arm muscles. And stretching up the hamstrings. Slow your breath down. Feel your heart thump. And slowly inhale up. Now tuck those toes. You're gonna inhale the hips up high, exhale, drop the heels, bowing your forehead toward the ground. You spread those fingers, shake your head nod. You can bend those knees, you can skip up or hop up into a forward fold, exhale all the way down. Slowly, slowly inhale, hands up to the sky. Exhale, hands to the heart. All right, so I'm thinking of another variation of, <laughs> of the, sun, the moon salutation. So it's one where we do a triangle pyramid, almost triangle pose. So inhale, arms up to the sky, reach. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway up. Engage the core, have that flat back. Exhale, hands down. Now inhale that right foot back, take a step back. You're almost in a pyramid stretch. Now we're gonna inhale that right arm up to the sky. So it's a nice little stretch, almost like triangle pose. And then bend that front knee. And inhale, lift up into a warrior two. And straighten out that leg again. And then now you're gonna point the toes out front to the side of the mat. And arms are still up. I'm gonna point the opposite toes to the back of the mat. To bend that knee, come into that warrior two, and then you're gonna drop your arm down, and then straighten out the leg and drop your hand to the ankle, kind of stack the shoulders. So it's almost it's coming back into trikonasana, triangle pose. And then exhale, drop the hand down, coming into pyramid pose. Woo! All right, now dropping down, lifting up that back, you'll come into that runner's lunge. Now we're gonna step that back foot forward. So we're into a forward fold. Inhale, halfway up. Engage the core. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, sprouting up, hands to the sky, high plant. And then exhale, hands to the heart. So we're now facing the back of the mat. Again, roll the shoulders back, tuck the tailbone. Engage the core, ears over shoulders, shoulders over hips, lift the toes up, plant them firmly into the mat. And inhale, arms up to the sky, reach. Exhale, hands to the heart. <laughs> inhale, arms up again. Sorry, I got distracted by the plant. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway up. Engage the core. Exhale, dropping the hands down. So now we're gonna do the opposite leg. We're gonna inhale that left foot back, taking a step, coming into a pyramid pose almost, so you're getting a stretch in your right hamstring. You're gonna inhale that left arm up. You can even move your, your left foot out to the 45 degree angle, and stacking your shoulders. Now we're gonna bend that right knee, inhaling up, coming into warrior two. So if you need to take that back foot a little wider, so warrior two, 
Good job. Now straighten out that front leg, tilting the feet parallel. And then we're gonna tilt it forward, back in front. The front foot to the top. You can move your back foot 45 degrees. And we're gonna, and you can actually bend that front knee and lean forward and lay your left elbow onto the knee, top hand over to the side angle pose. A full stretch. And then you can even drop your hand down a little bit more onto a block if you want. It's a full side angle stretch. Put the block in front of that foot. A full stretch. Here you can exhale, drop that top hand down, both hands, both sides into that runner's lunge. And opening up that right hip, and then here you can step up into a forward fold. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhaling, sprouting arms up to the sky. Exhale, hands together. Now, turning this way to the side, kick your feet out wide, hands on the hips. Inhale, through the crown, looking up to the sky. Exhale, dropping your forehead down toward the ground. Here, you can grab your ankles. Pull your forehead toward the ground some more. You can even drop your hands between the feet and press into your palms. Pull your head down. Bend those elbows. Give a full stretch of your glutes and shake your head and nod. Good job. Now bend those knees slightly. Hands on the waist. Inhaling back up. Coming back up. Good job. Now interlace the fingers behind the back. Squeeze the palms. And then inhale, chin up. Exhale, forward fold again, balancing here. Pull the wrist forward. Get the full shoulder shut. Shake your head, nod. And release the palms, placing them on the ground. We're going to bend your right knee all the way down. So you're coming into Skandasana. So dipping the left toes up, you're going to take your right elbow into that right knee. You can lift that bottom heel, your right foot. We're getting that full stretch of your abductors. So I'm getting nice and low. You might need blocks if you need block. If you have blocks around, help elevate you. We're getting stretchy in the, the, ha the hamstrings as well as the abductors that keep legs apart. And just like Spider-Man spider when we're gonna walk it across nice and low, shifting the opposite toes up, left elbow in front of the left knee to open up the hip. Again, if you need blocks to grab the balance, a full stretch, you lift the bottom of your left heel. So it's also stretching out your ankles, getting them stronger. Now, inhaling all the way back one more time. Scan Dawson, you can tip those toes up. So this is surfer pose. Now walk it across, because it is summer and a lot of people are surfing, a lot of people are learning. Coming back toward the center, bend those knees, hands on the waist, inhaling back up. Now pulling the feet out toward the corners, pulling the heels in, we're gonna hands on the, the heart, we're gonna exhale, squat. This is a horseman pose or goddess pose or something names. You place your hands uh, on the knees or on the laps. We're gonna inhale through the crown, exhale, dropping, twisting, coiling like a serpent. You're gonna Turn and twist, look behind your right shoulder. A full back stretch, inhale again through the center, through the crown, exhale, twisting, looking over your left shoulder. Breathing here, inhaling back, and then inhale, hands up together, exhale, hands to the heart and squat. Good job, inhaling back up, hands up to the sky, and then pull, jumping your feet together. Whew. Take your feet out wide, wide as the hips, if not wider, maybe wide as your, your shoulders. And then we're gonna take your hands to the heart. We're gonna exhale, squatting into a chair. So leaning back. So your feet might be wide. You can also put a block between the knees. Squeeze the thighs. So squatting, squatting, looking at your toes, lean back on your heel. So make sure you can see your toes. You can have your arms up, reaching. Good job. And then inhaling back up. Taking that block, you're gonna place it on your right outer lateral edge of your feet. 
gonna do Giridasana arms, Giridasana legs, eagle arms, eagle legs. The hands to your heart, just get a nice little low squat like a chair. And then take your left leg over the right, like you're gonna sing cross leg. Now you can place your left foot onto that block, squat a little lower. Now take your left arm in front, right arm over, twisting and binding. You can dangle, but this is your eagle arms. Inhale, lift through those elbows, breathe in your shoulders and exhale, kind of fold down, making your elbow knee touch. So balancing here, if you want to challenge, you can try to wrap the bottom toes around that bottom ankle and focus on a point in front of you, a wristy that's not moving. And slowly, slowly inhaling, unwrapping everything. Whew. No sweat, it's getting warm. All right. Putting the block on the left side of your lateral foot. And have your feet together, feet out wide, coming into that chair. So hands to the heart. And then we're gonna exhale, squat. Nice and low. Now you're gonna take your right leg over the left, place that foot on the left block. Here you can take your right arm in front, left arm over, eagle arm. Twist them by if you can, otherwise dangle. Inhale, lift those elbows up, breathe in your shoulders. And then exhale, folding down, elbow to knee. And here you can even wrap the bottom feet around those ankles, focus on a point, it's not moving. And slowly unwind. Woo! Woo, very warm. All right, hands together, feet out wide, and exhale, drop down into a low squat. You can sit on the block if you want. You can have your elbows into the inner thighs, you rock left and right, dynamically stretching out those calves, strengthening those ankles. You're just sitting on the block kind of helps. I want to sit against the wall. Place those elbows into the inner knees. Open up those thighs. You're breathing into your tight hips. I know. Stretchy. And then here, you want to play. You can take the block, place it in front of your skull, and then palms right in front. Elbows into the inner thighs. We're going to Spread those fingers and then tip forward. You kind of tip forward and over the block, you know, lift up one toe or the other toe or both toes, engage the core, focus on the, the block or you can place the block over your head so you can focus that way. When you're done, it seems like you can have a seat. So having that nice, generous sitting, if you have those two tennis balls in the sock, even better. If you have a tennis ball, we can place it behind your crown. So we're gonna slowly, slowly grab your hamstring, exhaling all the way down to the ground. So let me change the angle of this camera. Now exhale all the way down to the ground. Nice and slow, back onto your back. All right, you can bend those knees and place the two balls in a sock. Random sock I found in my sock drawer. And place it underneath your head, underneath the two points of occipital region. And relax. You have your feet together, knees out apart. And you have your feet out wide and your knees together. Or you can have your legs out and extended. And allowing your balls to strut to massage the back of your, now you can look left, you can look right. And give yourself a massage. An option if you don't have these balls is you take your hands together and you kind of wrap it behind your butt head. You take your thumbs and kind of massage with your pointer finger and your thumbs. Again, you can massage tension in the back of your head where your neck meets your skull. So you got a lot of occipital muscle there, part of the occipital region of your head. And the reason why it's that region is because there's occipital lobes, there's four lobes in your brain. Actually two hemispheres. So technically you should be eight lobes, but it's 
see frontal lobe. What was across? Occipital is just back and then you got your periel on either side. So that's one, two, three, four. Then you got your inner midbrain, which is a lot more pieces like the hypothalamus, amygdala, amygdala, I can't say that, amygdala. And then you got many, many more regions of your brain, the pons. Your brain is so fascinating. I give it a good massage. The, the fingers even massage the back of your scalp. Even pull your, your skull up and then away from your neck. So it gives you a little tension through your neck. Because again, always compressing our spine. And have anyone seen those like door neck traction things? So you're kind of doing it yourself. And you're being gentle about it. Every time you lift from the back of your occipital, I'll give it a nice uh, tension releaser, a marble point, pressure point. And when you're ready, you can blink your eyes open. You want to extend those legs out. You can grab your blanket nearby. You can close those eyes and grab a bolster even. Put it underneath your knees. Just baby yourself. If you don't have a bolster used blocks, you can modify. You have no blocks, use books. You have blankets that helps too. Spread out your arms, palm facing up. And release the shoulders. The shoulder blades lie flat. And now you're gonna focus breathing into the top of your crown. Close those eyes, allow those eyeballs to sink in. Practice just a little qigong with you. Visualization. So visualize a light shining down over you. It might be the sun or the moon or a star. Give it a quality. Let it be love, peace, energy, health, and perhaps a color that represents that quality. Consciously open the top of your head like you have a small sliding door where the soft spot was when you were born. Allow the light to stream into the head, concentrating at the third eye, the point between the brows. Slowly allow the head to fill with this beautiful light. Bring your awareness to your cheeks on your face, just beneath the eyes. That is your signal to relax your face in a smile. Relax those eyeballs. Feel the light pooling in the mouth and then swallow. Letting it move down into the throat chakra at the base of the throat chakra. So allow it to move down to the heart chakra at the heart, at the center of the chest. And let that ball of light expand to the chest and breathe. Breathe into your lungs as if they were part of the floor. Feel it move down into the solar plexus, just beneath where the ribs meet. Feel it move down into the lower dantian. That's a term for qigong, just below the navel. Expand the abdomen and breathe. Feel the light building like waves up as you take several back breaths. Allow the light to slide down between the legs and contract the sphincter muscle. Letting the light move up to the back at the waist. Relax, relax the sphincter muscle. One of my teacher's favorite words. Feel the energy moving slowly at the spine. One vertebrae at a time until it reaches the brain point between the shoulder blades, it's opposite of the heart. 
Let it divide into a V and moving to the top of each shoulder blade and shoulder. Feel it slide down under the arms into the armpits, forming into a small ball of light about the size of a tennis ball. And slide, let it slide down inside the arms to the elbows, into the wrists. Begin pulling in the palms of your hands. So allow it to build into another chi ball of light in the palm of your hands until it's so large. It becomes dripping off the tip of the fingers. You bring the awareness to the tips of the middle fingers. At the same time, you become aware of the third eye. Just relax, breathe. In your posture for as long as you feel therapeutic. Hollow and soften the base of your throat. Allow this eyeball to sink in a little bit more into your body. Soften your cheeks. And your jaws relax. Allow your ears to relax. Breathing in to your lungs. You're breathing all the way down to your belly button. Relax those arms out and get heavier. How your body to get heavier. Power and wisdom, Sakti. Now it's time to go back to our own origins in yoga practice in order to further our inward journey. We have established your practice and let's not neglect the power of a healthy body. Surya Sakti. Body without energy and consciousness is half dead. In another chapter we read on pranayama breath work, we established the vital importance of the power of pranic energy, prana sakti. Now introduce another power, that of awareness, prajna. Prajna is awareness of consciousness. I mentioned it only a few paragraphs ago as self-aware consciousness. I did not give the Sanskrit translation. Is called prajna. The power of self awareness is prajna sakti. Prajna is also translated as knowledge of wisdom. These three powers have first to be brought into alignment in order to coordinate with the power of the soul, atma sakti, so that they may merge with it. Body power plus energy can, um, as I warned, overload the system. By putting too much a high voltage to make inadequate circuit. It is by adding the power of the awareness of consciousness that we balance these huge forces within us. This makes possible expansion at every level, kosha, every layer of our body, but without danger, strain, or overload. The role of awareness is to fill the gaps that inevitably exist between the physical bones, muscles, etc., and organic, for example, organs, shapes of our body when we practice asana. Even when we are integrating the various shapes of our bodies, there are gaps that we fill to fill with awareness and energy. Constant practice of all petals of yoga will eventually repair all flaws inherent within the human system. Power we generate through yoga practice must become a coherent and indissoluble whole. Yoga sadhana is meant to knit the fibers to the skin and the skin to the fibers so that they can coral and the outer kusha, outer sheep, into the atma 
Kosha, the soul chief. Only then, and the oneness of the power we create within ourselves, be integrated with the universal power that surrounds us. If not, divisions will inevitably remain. I have taught in this chapter of Maha, Cosmic Intelligence, existing as a universal resource at our disposition. Prajna Sakti, the power of awareness, of nothing less than cosmic intelligence, seeping and soaking into the dark spaces of our being to illuminate them with consciousness. Consciousness has to settle down with clarity, brightness, and serenity. This renders a gratifying satisfaction to the conscious at an egoless and very close to the soul. In practical terms, how does this work? We already know that cosmic energy, prajna, prana, is carried into us by the vehicle of breath. So how is cosmic awareness inducted into us? What fuels it? The fuel is willpower or sustained intention with attention. See how we are moving closer to concentration, nirvana, sixth petal of yoga. But still you must be asking, how do I ignite the fuel of my willpower? I know it comes from the heart, not the head, I cannot just conjure it up from the air. Yes, you can, for it is air, or rather prana, which ignites the fuel of will, allows awareness to spread and percolate throughout our system. Energy and awareness, both cosmic entities, act as friends. Where one goes, the other one follows. It is by the will of awareness, to penetrate that intelligence, able to move into and occupy the darkest inner resources of our being. This intelligence is clarity to enlighten the darkness. This is the dawn of wisdom, intuitive insight that sees because it sees, knows because it knows, and acts immediately and spontaneously because the three powers of the body, energy, and awareness, awareness has emerged and align themselves with the light emitted by the soul. The same intelligence has insight. We should complement that by saying that the soul has outsight. It is a beacon shining out. As I have said at the beginning of the book, in the inward journey, as our will goes inward, our soul comes outward to meet us. I have talked a lot on freedom from various angles. Something we all associate with freedom is space. Americans refer nostalgically to the space and freedom of all of us. Space is freedom. When we create like a big bang, space is in the practice of asana and pranayama. Dark space is not unknown and unknowing avidya. But when the power of uh, power of energy, the power of awareness combine, there's a flash of lightning that banishes darkness. It's by the exercise of our drive or consciousness that we witness this. It is a subjective revelation as no one else can witness it, or corroborate it. But it is not also true that if you have a toothache, no one else can feel it. Yet no authority on earth can convince you that too does not hurt. We use the phrase, quote, the inward journey, a lot about this book. Now we find ourselves in the realm where the inner is visibly trying to get out, express itself. The space we create is such that the source body, the innermost, can begin to radiate it out. Your practice remains only at the physical level. The spatial essential, the space essential to liberate the inner will be missing. The realization that each cell has its own intelligence through which to realize its brief existence will never come. You remain locked in the dark density of matter. 
And what you are seeking is for the inner light to radiate in space. It is a shame to practice yoga so much into this level. Yet still remain unencumbered and still remain encumbered with ego. Or more than to expand to fill our whole being. Oh, sorry. One should be natural, like a happy, confident child. The soul seeks nothing more than to expand to fill our whole being. And still we remain an internal cringe and sense of unworthiness, which often we mask by a projection of an arrogant, false personality. This is just one of the inherent flaws that exist equally in the intelligence. Maybe your fingers and toes, your eyes closed. Inhale, arms up to the sky, exhale over the head, stretch and yawn. And then exhale, pull those knees in toward the heart. You can rock left and right like a world A. Massage in the side body. Come on, Next, go to your favorite side and follow your face. Take two or three deep breaths there. Take your time. When you're ready, press up into a single position. And when you're ready, inhale, arms up to the sky, reach for the stars, and together, exhale, hands to the heart. Welcome to a Thursday, but it's Tuesday evening session, and I'll see you guys Thursday. Um, I know in a couple of weeks I'll be heading to Hawaii and I'm playing it by ear because I may or may not be able to get back in time from my adventures to teach and you might have to use the YouTube videos to the thing. But otherwise, I might be able to do it. So I'll keep you guys um, uh, updated. All right, namaste. Thank you for showing. Have a good one.